Hello everyone, Oli here again. I thought I could present a short tutorial on how 3D scanned footage, which is recorded with a 360 degree camera, can be modified and how we can easily extract 360 video into this so called cube map format. I already covered this topic quite extensively in one of my previous videos. In it, I went through the principles of converting 360 sphere images and how cube map images can be used, for example, to train 3D Gaussian splatting models. Now I want to revisit this topic and show you how this same conversion can be done in After Effects. So let's get started. Once we have a 360 video in this so called 2 by one equirectangular format, we can drag it into After Effects and make a new composition out of it. After Effects has had native VR tools for quite some time now, and they are used specifically for editing 360 degree images. When we type VR into this effect search field, we find effect called VR Converter. We can drag it onto this layer now. VR Converter is a very versatile effect that converts different 360 images to other 360 formats. Since our source material is this traditional equirectangular 2 by one format, we can select it from the drop-down menu in this input field. Next, in the output field we can select which other 360 format we want to convert it to. And when we go through and check all these options found here, we notice that 360 images can be converted in a very versatile way. For example, here we can find the traditional cube map layout, which is this box model folded into an opening. But then we can also find other cube map versions, one where all six faces are arranged side by side into this long strip, and other where we have this panorama view, and then three separate faces underneath it. But what we are looking for is this 3x2 Facebook cube map format. This is an interesting format which I want to tell a little background story. Back in 2016 and 17, when VR technology was on the rise, Facebook was of course also excited about this technology and wanted to be involved in the developing of 360 degree image capturing. They ended up creating this format, which is this series of six images where all sides of the cube were placed in this 3 by 2 grid. It was seen as having better visual quality and performance on mobile devices. And Facebook even developed its own camera for this format, and they had quite ambition vision for it and wanted to make a cube map format as a standard. However, the project ended up being short-lived, when the system was found to be too complex and the camera system were too expensive to build. The boom around the 360 images did not become hugely popular and never lived up to expectations. So Facebook slowly abandoned the project, but as a remnant of it, we still have this format here in After Effects. And now we are going to take advantage of it when we start extracting each of these square images into its own independent JPEG files. I have developed my own small script for this function. You can download it, it for free from my website, where I also have other scripts and applications that I have made. I will put the link in the description. But before we start using the script, we need to create an output template for the JPEG images. And that can be done by going to this Edit drop-down menu and selecting Templates and this Output module from here. Then we press this New button. After that we choose a new JPEG sequence format from here 
And if you want to make some quality settings, you can do it behind this button. But otherwise this is done and we can press the OK button. Now comes the important part. This template should be named exactly like this. Type splitter jbg. In here it will be called later by this name in my script, so it is important to have it on the right name. Then we can go back to our composition. Since this video is quite long and I won't need every single frame from it, I can remove frames from it at this point. It's easy to do by right-clicking on the layer and selecting Time and enable Time Remapping. This will show the start and end keyframes for this layer. I can take the last frame and drag it towards the beginning. I want the entire video to be produced in total of 150 frames, so I'll drag this keyframe to that point in the timeline. And by the way, if you want to change the time display to show frames, it is easy to do by pressing the control button from the keyboard and then just clicking these time display numbers. It will switch the time between frames and time code. Then we can of course trim this timeline to be exact that 150 frames long. I'll drag this work area marker from the end and with the shift key down it will snap to the exact same location as this time remap key is. And then by right clicking over the work area I can choose trim comp to work area option. Now we are ready to run the script. Let's make sure that the layer where our 360 video is is selected and then we can go to the file drop down menu and select scripts and from here then run script file. Now we need to go to the directory where we have extracted the script file from the zip package that was downloaded from my website. And then let's select this cubemapsplitter.jsx file and press open. A small window like this will appear where we can select a folder. This folder is a directory where we want these JPEG files to be saved. So go in suitable directory and if necessary you can also create a new folder from here. Once the output folder location is selected you can press OK and my script will start doing its job. It will only take a moment for all six face images to be separated, so you will finally get a message like this. Now we can select the Render Queue tab, and there we will see the rendering tasks that are ready. All we have to do is press the Render button, and After Effects will render each of these images as its own square image sequences into the directory that we specified earlier. When everything is ready and you go to that folder with the file explorer, you can look at the images and you will find 150 JPEG images of each specified cube map face. And that's it. Now you can use these images however you want. For example, I drag these images into the PostShot program and we will see what kind of a 3D Gaussian splatting model it could train out from these source images. And after several hours this turned out to be a relatively good and usable 3D model. CubeMap material produced in this way gives you a new possibility to use 360 footage and generate 3D models like this. So I hope this tutorial was useful and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.